Hi everyone, my name is Jay Sable and I'm the Executive Director of the One Community 501c3 nonprofit organization. Our goal is to create the next evolution in sustainability and we're doing that through, or we believe that next evolution will be, open source creation, free sharing, incorporation of a resource-based economy, uh, obviously sustainable food, sustainable energy, and sustainable housing combined together. But the next step we believe is making it truly a do-it-yourself industry such that everybody that's working in this industry right now to build the basics instead repurposes their time and energy to evolve the basics to a new level of creativity, to a new level of creation and innovation that will benefit everyone. And so we call ourselves the highest good for all organization and we want to take all of that to the next level and incorporate fulfilled living as well and a culture of cooperation and collaboration and for the highest good of all thinking so that we're all working together for the betterment of the complete and entire human organism and so this is our progress our video progress update number 14 which is for our weekly progress for the week of May 27th and everything that we're, we've done and are doing uh, or rather have done in the last week in achieving that goal so jumping into it, the most important thing, or at least the most important thing to our project is um, we had some really, I reported in on last week's video blog that we had some great news from the seller of our property. We are still seeking funding to remove the property from the location, or remove the property from the, remove the property from the market so we can share the location, so that we can share the property details because we believe that this is foundational to completing our team, which will exponentially increase the amount of work that we're getting done as far as open source and free sharing creation as well as uh, completing our funding and so um, the number one thing that we completed in the last week we started it early in the week and we fit, spent all week finishing it was updating of all three of our investor pages which is an investor overview the most comprehensive overview of everything that one community is the uh, property page which is the why this location page that discusses uh, the criteria that we use in selecting the property and, and the two-year process that we spent locating it, as well as the investor options page, which talk about uh, for-profit and non-profit options for helping to support one community. So as always, I do a written blog that goes along with this video blog, and the link to that written blog is down below in the description of this YouTube video if you would like to help us out. Um, share this video and share that written blog with anybody that you know that might be able to help us with funding because that's really the next huge, huge step for us. So that was the number one thing that we completed last week. Uh, additionally, we've completed a lot. Uh, we've done some huge forward movement in the food infrastructure department. Um, if you click on the link, you'll see that we've sketched out or we've drawn out, detailed out exactly where it is that we are going to put everything, every well, where and what we are going to plant in the large-scale Aquapini Wallapini designs. And so the next step will be cleaning up that, that map of everything that's going to be grown in there and creating the companion web page with pictures of every single plant, descriptions of every single plant, um, considerations as far as planting every single plant within that building so that uh, it's an open source project launch blueprint for other people to use as effectively as we're using it. Uh, additionally, we've been working on, we continue to work on the tropical atrium planting plan and plugging through that, we've gotten a whole bunch more descriptions done. It's just hours and hours of work. You know, we've solidified exactly what the new formatting is gonna look like on that. And we've got three different people working on those descriptions. And as I've said now for, I believe, three, four weeks, I hope that this is the week that we will finish that and be able to put it out there as the amazing, um, really, truly mind-blowingly beautiful uh, page that it's going to be describing everything that will be grown in the tropical atrium as well as how much it costs to purchase each one of those plants and all those details. So in the same level of detail is going to be used for the large-scale production Aquapini and Wallapini and so um, we've got those details almost done for that one as well. And so once we get this one done, we believe that we'll be able to do the second one in a fraction of the time, and the third one, which is the Wallapini, in a fraction of the time of that, and by that point, we'll get it down to a nice rhythm and flow so we can get out Zen Aquapini 1 and Zen Aquapini 2, 
as well and have our complete food infrastructure done. And we've also planned out all of our initial plantings, or rather we're doing this today right now. Uh, we've been corresponding back and forth uh, on the details of the hoop houses that we will be setting up on the property as soon as we land there and so we can start growing the moment we land on that property. Because our goal is to demonstrate that anyone, anyone can become 100%, almost 100% food self, well, let me rephrase that, that anyone could become 100% food self-sufficient within one year of starting a teacher demonstration village like we are. And with that said, there are some things that just make more sense to purchase, depending on where you're at. You know, grains and flour and things like that, in a lot of cases, it make more sense just to purchase. Spices and things like that make more sense just to purchase. So when we say that you could be 100% food self-sufficient, it means that you don't need to buy food outside of what you're producing, but people probably will still choose to do that for some of the diversity and variety uh, that they may desire. And more importantly, in our model, what we're creating, and you'll see this if you go and you visit the pages that we're putting up, especially the second wave of pages, which are the aquapinis and the wallapinis and everything that we're growing in there, our goal is to grow a lot of foods that you actually can't buy in the grocery store. Even in a large city like Los Angeles or New York, foods that would be very, very challenging to get unless you were going to very specialized markets to get those. And then to teach people how to, uh, how to eat those foods because they are delicious and amazing. Very hard to come by, very expensive if you are buying them. And they're things that can totally be grown in the environments that we're creating. And so all that stuff is coming along. Food infrastructure is really moving forward um, beautifully. Additionally, we've had some great evolutions and progress with the Sago Center uh, City Hub, duplicable City Hub. Uh, we've got our laundry details, which I reported on last week. We did get the release from the um, from their, uh, it's not a disclaimer, but from their uh, copyright and patent statement that was originally delivered to us with that. And they said, no, no, you can share this as open source. And so I'm excited. I'll post that in the description down below if you'd like to see our laundry details for the Sego Center, which will replace laundry rooms for all seven villages. It's being designed so that we can do laundry for a couple hundred people out of this laundry facility, industrial laundry facility. Uh, this is the 1.0 version of that. We actually want to upgrade what we've got in there right now to combination washers and dryers. So you put the laundry in, it washes and it dries in one unit, which is really important for our community contribution and um, the efficiency aspect of the way that one community will be running. But those details are done. And we can share those now. Uh, and then also, uh, last week we had a conference with P2S Engineering, who is helping us with our HVAC systems, as well as glazing and insulation and all of these details for the Sago Center. And that went fantastic, really exciting stuff. And uh, I posted the link to, to that information. I'll post it again if people want to download their first level of recommendations. But we also had uh, uh, Andrew, myself, and Carl had our call with P2S Engineering and two or three of their guys and super, super helpful just talking about all these details and some of the plans and stuff that we're going to start integrating now as we continue to move forward. And i um, just excited to be working with P2S Engineering. What an amazing group of talented individuals that are going to help us make the Sego Center a LEED Platinum certified building. So it will be the, it will be the peak of efficiency and sustainability, and that's really exciting. And then uh, third on the Sego Center City Hub, is we have also um, continued to move forward on 3D. And so if you'd like to see the most recent 3D images, I've exported a whole bunch of 3D images for that, and you can take a look at those and see the details. And as that continues to move forward, um, we'll, we'll just keep putting those up. When it's done, it'll be an open source. The, the actual file, the 3D file, will be an open source document that anybody will be able to take and use and, um, and modify and play with or change and, uh, and build build the Sago Center themselves. Of course, we're creating all the content that somebody would need to duplicate that building, but this big piece is moving forward quite efficiently right now. And so that's exciting. Um, we've also got 3D. Speaking of 3D, uh, 3D continues to move forward on the Earthbag Village. And so I'll put up a couple pictures of that as well, um, which is exciting. We're just getting the first dome dialed in. And once that dome is 100% the way that we want it, We'll be able to multiply it 75 times to create the whole Earthbag Village, along with all the different elevation changes and all the other details related to that. So we'll actually be able to walk through that, that village. And when that's done, uh, we will open source that as well. So coming along on that. Um, and then the other thing that we did is um, progress on the education program. We've completed 
the Community, Family, and Social Skills Curriculum for the Education for Life program. As I reported last week, we've got all of the curriculum is now done. It's just a process of putting it up on the website. And so that page is actually up on the website now. You can check it out. I'll add the link in the description down below. And I think that's it. Um, lots of images and stuff to share. So let's see, we've got the food infrastructure uh, image to share. We've got the 3D for the Sago Center image to share. We've got the 3D for the Earthbag Village image to share. We've got the laundry details for the Sago Center. We have the uh, P2S meeting with the Sago Center. And we've got the Education for Life program. I think that's it. Yep. Oh, and uh, on the Earthbag Village, we've also uh, completed all of the detailed work for pricing out all of the tools, everything from cement mixers to shovels, everything that's needed to build the entire Earthbag Village to run four teams working together to complete the entire Earthbag Village, which we are predicting can be done and under we're calculating out the, uh, the labor requirements on that. We are pretty confident we'll be able to do that in easily in under two years, which is housing for 100 people is 75 units, including uh, food infrastructure, as well as uh, all the 75 different units and a recreational space. Really, really something beautiful. And so um, lots and lots of work has gone into completing the tools and equipment aspect, and now we're working on the materials details. And so all those things are done behind the scenes as well, and uh, we should be able to get those up on the website within the next week. And so uh, lots of cool pictures and stuff to share this week. Lots more stuff to go open source content and real project launch blueprinting details should be coming out in this next week. We've got lots of time and lots of people working on a whole bunch of different things that are really wrapping up right now. And so um, the evolution of sustainability is moving forward. It's really, really moving forward. And uh, we invite people to join us. If you're interested in participating in what it is that we're creating, we can use help. We can always use more help in creating this. There's a lot of people out there that are focusing on a resource-based economy, that are aware of the Venus Project and what those goals are, and really see a possibility for a new future. And that's our goal. And um, we see that as possible, and we think that we're a viable stepping stone to creating those things on a global scale, to really, really in, in, enrolling the entire human population in this idea that is interested in it, anybody that wants to participate. And so we're creating the roadmap and the path to that, that's the evolution of, of sustainability that we see as possible. And this is my report for the week of May 23rd, 2013. Thanks, as always, for your support. Thanks for following our progress. We really appreciate it. And, of course, uh, if you'd like updates, if you'd like to see our updates regularly, please subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you get email notifications each week when we post one of these. Um, consider liking and sharing our videos and our blog posts and things like that. Check out the written blog. Check out our ongoing blog. See what we've been doing. Um, we've only been doing these video posts for 14 weeks, but we've been doing a blog for far before that, and we've been working on this project I've been working on this project full time, full time, for two years now, and uh, and the team as well. Various levels of, of commitment from different people on the team, and this has been over a decade of work to bring us to where we are right now. Well over a decade of work, and so um, yeah, check out our project, share our project, and as always, thanks a ton for all of your support and following what we're doing. And uh, if you're somebody that's interested in joining us, please do. If you're somebody that's interested in just being a part of the path to the evolution of sustainability. Take everything that we're creating. Use it in the way that works best for you. Evolve it in a different direction if you'd like to see it done differently. That's the whole idea from our perspective of open source and free sharing is to provide usable tools, usable resources so that people can duplicate everything that we're doing if they want to do it the same way that we're doing it or even better so people can take it and do it in their own way and evolve it in possibly an even better direction. And so uh, support open source, support free sharing, and help get this information out there by using it. With that, I'll say thanks very much. Until next week, have a good one.